no animal walks or runs like us. The origins of human bipedalism are still in the dark. But uh, the interesting thing is that uh, some paleoanthropologists believe that our style of locomotion uh, was indeed a crucial initiating event in human evolution. Five to seven million years ago, when humans separated from our cousins, you know, the, the chimpanzees, the human babies don't walk independently until late, about one year. But spontaneous stepping movements are produced by neonates when they're placed in contact with the firm surface. We reason that perhaps locomotion is built starting from common, largely inborn primitives in several animal species. And that is why uh, we saw the images of a rat, of a cat, of a macaque, and even a guinea fowl, a bird. Because what we did was to reanalyze the published recordings from a ne neonate rats, and we found patterns nearly identical to those of human neonates. This is really striking because one would say that uh, human newborns have nothing to do with uh, newborn rats. And nevertheless, the patterns, the, the fundamental commands are the same. Uh, you can see pediatrician Vito Mondi, who is the co-author of the article, who is holding a three days old neonate. Um, as soon as the neonate contacts the table with his feet, he starts stepping. It's automatic, involuntary. And Vito just supplies the minimal support, gently pulls the infant along, and meanwhile we observe and monitor the baby's motion, contact forces on the table and the electrical activity of the muscles. You can see that the, the, this movement, this step is very regular and variable. It looks like an exaggerated marching with a flex posture, high lift of the swinging limb, and quite an appropriate placement of the feet on ground. And of course, this is very different from what happens in all the children and adults. The baby is walking on a special table. It is an instrumented text scan which monitors the vertical contact force, the pressure that the small feet of the, of the newborn make on the table. Uh, there are these yellow markers that are uh, captured by a video motion system so that we can then calculate the kinematics, the movement in real time of the baby. And then all these wires are uh, its safe uh, equipment. Uh, there is no electrical current to the, to the baby, but it's able to record the electrical activity of several muscles, which are simultaneously recorded from. What we are able to see is that um, in babies, there is very simple patterns of muscle activation. It looks like a sort of a sine wave just smooth waves uh, which travel in time and co-activated many muscles, but they are able, in fact, to uh, generate enough activity so that the baby can stand, support part of his weight, and swing the limbs. Um, I must say I'm especially proud of this because that's my son Andrea, uh, the day before his first birthday. And you can see that the style of locomotion is clearly different from that of the neonate. But surprisingly enough, uh, when we then analyze the uh, patterns of electrical activity, we see that the original patterns which were present already in, in the neonate are not at all suppressed. They are retained, but they are incremented by two new patterns which are more pulsatile and they are first apparent now at the total stage. What we actually record is the output of the motor neurons, which are located in one specific portion of the spinal cord, the lumbosacra, where there is the generation of the stepping. First, I would like to come back for a moment to where we started from, that is the evolution. Because having observed that the primitive patterns of human locomotion are conserved through human development, we wondered, we asked, well, Maybe they are also conserved in animal evolution, at least to some extent. Finally, uh, if I may add, I believe that, uh, although one needs to be very careful here, but there might be uh, some clinical implications of what we show. Because, first of all, the discovery of the uh, patterns, which are the control waveforms used by the central nervous system, might help designing better tools for rehabilitation. 
for functional electrical stimulation and prosthetics for patients with spinal cord injuries and other neurological diseases which impair locomotion.